Uh, if we can switch gears for a moment, I think a lot of people who are going to be uh, reading this interview and watching it are, are, are going to recognize your voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Bible, long ago, More people know my voice than anything else. Yeah. They said, oh, that's that guy. I didn't know that he looked like that. He's, <laughs> he's, he reads the Bible every night or morning. And it, mm -hmm. I actually have, have put my kids to bed at night by playing um, your, your voice, reading the Bible. So uh, take us back to that project long ago when you did narrate the by uh, I think it's called the listener's Bible. Mm -hmm. I think translations. H how did you get involved in that? Yeah. Project? Yeah. Well, I've narrated the Bible five different times and I've been asked to do it multiple other times, but I just haven't been able to carve out the time. Um, my background's in the theater. And, and when I came to faith in Christ, uh, I really was trying to figure out a way to, integrate my faith with my work. And uh, in the early days, you know, there was a little bit of, uh, of momentum for drama in the church, but I wasn't really motivated in that direction. Uh, so I thought, you know, I was really motivated by great literature, great ideas, great thoughts, and, 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 the, and, and the, the role, at least the way I was trained, and I was trained in England, the role of theater, the role of acting is to use one's voice, one's mind, uh, one's body in terms of, of uh, to articulate great literature, great words, great thoughts. So I thought, boy, the Bible certainly class, you know, qualifies for that. And uh, so I thought I'd use the skills and techniques I developed in the theater and apply it to to the Bible. First, it was live presentations of the Bible. And it was like an event waiting to happen. And, and you know, the, the interesting thing is, is because I think the, the big idea behind that is, you know, and Lewis makes this point very clear in Mere Christianity. He says, uh, ideas, thoughts about the gospel, they're not the gospel, they're thoughts about the gospel. You know, so that's what a sermon is. That's what theology, theology is trying to explain something, but it's not it. The gospel is the gospel. It's the story. It's the, the event itself. <clears throat> and so in doing reenactments of the Bible, I was, I was, it was almost the closest thing to telling the gospel story itself. So uh, that was very, very motivating. And I saw it in the way people reacted to it. They didn't know what to do with it. It was like, oh my goodness, you know, this is too overwhelming. It's, it was almost scary. Uh, so I spent a lot of time doing that. And then, uh, yeah, so that's how it started. And then I started recording it. But the recording of it is, is a different art form too, because it's almost like radio. You know, you're, you're talking to one person. Uh, so it's a, you try to make it as intimate as an experience as you can. Did you, I mean, were, were you confident that you could pull this off or were there some passages that you thought, oh my, how, how do I even, what do I oh, do? Oh, I always you? thought that. But, yeah. but then I thought to myself, well, preachers have the same problem. So, uh, you know, the, 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 in one sense, I knew I was dealing with, uh, you know, being a finite being, dealing with infinite thought. You know, all I could do is approximate it. And that's what art does. Uh, you know, that's what any kind of art does is it extends beyond as far as you can, uh, as far as the mind can go and, and allow people to, to begin to uh, perceive, you know, but, but, all, you know, it's, it's never that we get it, you know, it's all, it's we, we approximate it. And sometimes we approximate it better uh, than other times. Did, did you uh, grow up with people telling you that you had a voice for radio? <laughs> you know what? I, I had to work on my voice. I think I had a, a natural instrument that was good, but I, you know, I didn't really train my voice until my twenties. So, and I had, and, and my voice teachers really recognized that I had a lot of work to do, but I did work hard at it, you know, because it's an instrument that needs to be developed. And, uh, uh, and it, you know, first it's the, the actual tone of it, the voice, and then it's the, the speech is the articulation. Uh, and so you got to get both of those together. Yeah. 